without protest, an ache without complaint, if he could be called champion. Obscurity was all he feared. I'll tell you a story about the kind of guy Rocky was. Publicist Murray Goodman. I brought him up to Rochester, where we gave away the Hickok belt. And Ray Hickok fell in love with him. And he gave him a hundred gross of the little miniature boxing gloves. The next week at camp, Rocky was selling them for a dollar a pair. He was, I wouldn't say cheap, but that was his upbringing. He could not be described as graceful. Even his trainer, Charlie Goldman, refused to conceal the obvious. Said Goldman, he was one of the clumsiest fellows I ever saw in the ring. Rocky Marciano did not appear to have the height or size of a legend in the making. He was five foot ten, around 185 pounds. But Marciano had a frightening tolerance for pain, and a fury few have possessed. This is Bill Corum in the Municipal Stadium, Philadelphia, where shortly we will bring you the Joe Walcott and Rocky Marciano heavyweight championship fight. But right now, I want to turn you over to announcer Phil Calabrese and the color guard in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Champion Joe Walker of Camden, New Jersey, who weighs 196 pounds for this defense of his title, already is in the ring, and you see him now in his corner. There's been no sign yet of Marciano, whose real name is Rocco Marciano of Brockton, Mass., who will weigh 184 for this bout and is the 8-5 to five favorite. This is the first time since Joe Lewis fought Jimmy Braddock in Chicago that a challenger has entered the ring for a heavyweight championship match the favorite. But Marciano is that tonight against Joe Walcott, the veteran of 38 years officially, and Marciano now coming into the ring is 28 years old just uh, recently during this month of September. An interesting note on this fight that has drawn between 40 and 45,000 people here on a chilly night, just a touch of autumn in the air here, a beautiful night for a fight, uh, is that exactly 26 years ago, Jack Dempsey and Gene Tunney fought in this same ring, in this same stadium here in Philadelphia, and that was the night that Tunney dethroned Dempsey. Gene is here tonight, sitting back of me. Whether he'll be in the ring or not, I don't know, but I'm sure he'll be introduced, as will, of course, Joe Lewis and several other fighters. 
The gloves, as in all championship matches, will be put on in the ring, and we'll have a slight delay, so I can tell you the gloves now. You see the boxes uh, being thrown out and the gloves handed around to uh, Charlie Goodman and uh, the Dan Florio and the trainers, and they will be put on in just a moment. There's one thing I'd like to point out to you on behalf of Theater Network Television, and that is that this is not a movie. Now, when we go to the picture theaters, all of us have become accustomed to having the voice synchronized with the picture. You're not seeing a movie tonight in those good seats that you've got on, uh, as, and seeing this fight as you will be on the big screen, but you're seeing the actual fight as you understand and the voice of mine, I'll try to stay out of your hair, but my voice will not be synchronized always with what you see. Now I turn you back to uh, Phil Calabrese and some of these introductions. This one, Archie Moore. George Benton. Bob Satisfield. And the 1952 Olympic champion, in the 118-pound class, Mady Brooks. Welcome. Introducing the former featherweight and junior lightweight champion, Benny Bass. Joe Giardella. Introducing a young man who recently scored a sensational knockout, Jimmy Bivens. And now, two of the most outstanding southpaws in ring history, introducing from yesteryear, Lou Tendler, and the present-day southpaw, Chuck Davey. Also sitting in the audience, and we'd like them to come up and take a bow, the former heavyweight champion, the one and only Joe Lewis. <laughs> Come up, Joe. Okay. Joe Lewis, ladies and gentlemen. How about Jack Dempsey? Uh, Lewis looks a little bit uh, plump, as you can see, but in very good shape. How about Gene uh, Tunney? I don't out. believe Dempsey is here, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm sure Tunney is. And this will be a dramatic moment because just 26 years How ago, Gene won that the Cinderella man. title that these boys will be fighting for tonight, right How here. How about the lightweight champion of the world, Joey Maxim? Come up, Joey. Jimmy Braddock, this is, ladies and gentlemen. I don't believe the Jim announcer knows. Jimmy Braddock. Jim's got a little plump, too. The announcer, having walked away, as you see, to Marciano's corner, I will repeat that I know very well that uh, Tunney's here. I'm sorry he won't come into the ring. I would like to see that myself. Here comes Al Weil, manager of Marciano, walking across the ring to his fighter that he's so confident will win this title tonight from the great old fighter from Camden, the old pappy guy, Joe Walker. Marciano, as you know, is undefeated, as you probably know, is undefeated in 42 fights and has scored 37 KOs. Walcott has been fighting since 1922. Officially, that's in the book now. He's had 65 fights, won 49, lost 15, and drawn once, and has KO'd only 30 of his opponents. 
Also sitting in the audience, Sugar Ray Robinson. I might also mention that uh, Walcott has been knocked out four times in his career. Uh, we just saw Joe Lewis here a moment ago. He knocked him out. So did Al Ator of Philadelphia, also in the audience, Abe Simon, Tony Galento. and Tiger Jack Fox. And I'll guarantee you that Galento will show up in the ring because he never misses. Here he comes, two-ton Tony. And behind him, Sugar Ray Robinson and man. You could play a little checkers on that coat, couldn't you? Sugar Ray! <laughs> Ray must have got that coat in Paris. It looks like it came right off the Rue de la Paix for sure. But he can fight, folks, and he still can. On that other occasion, when Dempsey and Tunney fought here, they crowd was the greatest in ring history, over 107,000 people. Nothing like that tonight, but a very fine crowd of maybe 45,000 and a gate. Perhaps I said before, I feel sure of at least a uh, half million dollars. There is 12 pounds difference in weight between the fighters, as you probably figured out, with Walcott at 196 and Marciano at 184. And of course, it was in this ring this spring that uh, Jersey Joe Walcott, remarkable athlete and fighter that he is for his age, because as I mentioned before, he's at least a plump 38, uh, defended his title against Desert Charles uh, successfully. He won the title from Charles in Pittsburgh with that famous left hook at Forbes Field. Now again, I believe here is the Ladies announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another heavyweight championship match under the promotion of Herman Taylor and the International Boxing Club. The officials for this contest, assigned by the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission, judges Pete Tomasco and Zach Clayton. Timekeeper, Charlie Cunningham. Counting for the knockdown, Joe Servino. Physicians in attendance at ringside in Walcott's corner, Dr. Joseph Bartone. In Marciano's corner, Dr. W.B.G. Terry. And the field physician, Dr. James J. Simpkins. The referee at this time, Charlie Daggett. Daggett is one of the veteran officials of uh, Pennsylvania. Very fine referee. The main attraction, 15 rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world from Brockton, Massachusetts, wearing black trunks with a white stripe Weighing 184 pounds, the challenger, Rocky Marciano. From Camden, New Jersey, wearing white trunks with a black stripes, weighing 196 pounds, the heavyweight champion, Jersey Joe Walcott. Now we'll listen to referee Charlie Daggett and his Let instructions. Fellas know the rules of the State Boxing Commission, and I'm in here to enforce them. Now all I'm going to do is go through just a few and leave me out of it. Number one, when I call for a break, I want both boys to step back. If I don't call for a break, keep on fighting. Is that clear above others? In case of a knockdown, a man scorned I want to go to the furthest neutral corner, stay there until I tell him to come out. I want your blows up. I don't want no kidney punches or rat. Take hands now. Come out, fight. There's, Any questions? There's no uh, eight pounds. Either. There's no knockdown eight pounds. You get up and stay down. Shake hands. 
Can I ask a question? Well, how about if the man gets hit in the back here? Is that a fair or foul punch? I ask both you boys to give me no kidney or no rabbit punches. I'm going to call them if I do. Watch them punch the rabbit. I want both of you to be, give me an honest, clean fight. That's all I'm in here to do. Yes, sir. <laughs> The man is holding, the other fellow is punching. He can keep punching. Why is right. not Sal tied Wild up. talking? Tied up. Uh, I want you to break. We don't know who it is talking to the referee. He is back come to out the camera with Marciano's name win. on the white sweater. Now they go back. We're waiting for round one. It is, of course, over the championship route of 15 rounds. You're in the municipal stadium in Philadelphia, and you folks are sitting in uh, with crowds in 49 theaters in 39 cities coast to coast on this theater network television, the biggest in history, and we do hope you'll see a good fight, and we know you'll see it in comfort. We'll do our best to tell you anything that we see that's important. Here they go. that Marciano is an amateur and uh, looks as if he might be going right to work on it. Which Joe definitely was doing, as you saw. Marciano staggered with a short right. Down from a left hook. The count was five. He went down from a left hook. a bit now for the first time. inside his mouth, not outside. <laughs> Those punches did not land solidly that Marciano threw. one very definitely Walker. So you see old Joe in his corner with uh, Felix Bokikio, his manager, leaning over, talking to him very calmly, and the man with the sponge, Dan Florio, his veteran trainer, a big round he had against the challenger, knocking him down with a beautiful left hook. The same left hook that knocked out Ezra Charles and won him the title, by the way. And Marciano took a five count. It figured to be a punching fight, and it started out that way. And as we told you, all the time, Walker has said that this would be an easy fight for him, that the uh, challenger was amateurish, and that he knew that he could handle it. Round two. <laughs> 
Marciano doesn't appear to have been too badly hurt. He seems fresh again. He's very strong, you know. Short right hand. Your punches with either one of them. Marciano leaping in. This is dramatic every second of it because the dynamite is in both gloves. Marciano hasn't figured out what to do with Joe, if he can do anything. by Marciano. I hope you saw it clearly. Very solid body punch. Got to hit with the left hook again and the right. Those are stunning, powerful blows that Joe is landing. He's still trying to get in one punch that will turn the tide. And the bell, the end of round two. They're busy, as you can see, or could see a moment ago, in Marciano's corner as the boy goes around with the ring card. Now you can see again Al Wow talking to him, pleading with him. Very, very cool yet, Marciano seems to be, but he was hurt, especially in that first round, although the passing of the second ran in his favor. Ten years, the younger man, still strong as a bull, still powerful, still dangerous. Uh, he won't be out of here until he's taken out. And so far, Joe hasn't been able to do it, though he punished him in both rounds. The first round, however, was bigger, the one with the knockdown and the five count. Round three. men are both keen. Walk had landed and uh, Marciano countered with a grazing right hand. Walkett's was the left hook. In Marciano's corner, they're hollering, keep him up, but there's been no low punch, I assure you. Walter continues to beat Rocky to the punch as Rocky rushes in.
Marciana got in a good right hand, solid right to the rib. With his short arms, Marciano has trouble reaching Walker, who has a much longer reach. Taller man, of course. But not, not a serious blow. Walker missed, and but Rocky landed. He's strong, he's strong, this Marciano. <laughs> At the bell, ending round three, Marciano staggered. It was a left hook. Walcott was moving away. Not a very solid punch, but he did stagger uh, and then turned and went back to his corner. It was the best round that Marciano has had, that last round the third. He began to come on a little bit, and he worked hard to Walcott's body. And Joe is breathing very heavily in his corner right now, taking long breaths. And uh, Marciano still seems to be unmarked and quite cool. There was a little blood in his mouth after the first round, but no more. And now we're coming to round four. It's a good fight. Something's have to happen any time now. Marciano, the aggressor. hit with either hand. Very good right hand there by Marciano. He is awkward, but he's not too easy to hit inside. All elbow. This is the way he likes to fight, crowd you and punch at you. Working to Walcott's body, 
Walker spends his back to the rope. Pretty stationary for Joe. They're both still hitting very hard. Round six. Because of his short arms, you notice Marciano has to leap into punch. Walker ties Marciano up. Now he broke free. Now Joe's got him again. Joe knows how. Punches then one, two, three, four. No return, but none landed really solidly and dangerously. Probably not seeing these punches. They're they're hard by both fighters. Marciano is now cut on the forehead. Walcott is cut around the eye. Walcott's cut around the eye. That may be his blood on Marciano's forehead. I can't be sure. Very tired at the bell was Walcott, rolling and taking punches, and that was the end of round six. The referee goes over to talk to Bokikio and Dan Florio, uh, Walcott's trainers. I don't think from what I can see that that is a deep cut and it uh, uh, definitely is true that Marciano uh, was not cut but uh, got the blood from Walcott's eye. He cut, uh, no he was a little bit I believe, a little cut right in, up in his hair that I can't, couldn't see before. But neither cut on either fighter is serious. Walcott slow to come out. substance on uh, fix up Walker's eye and he seems to be having a little trouble seeing out of his left eye. It's cut again. The 
action is very slow right now. Walcott's white trunks, red with blood down the front. In that exchange, both landed staggering punches. I thought maybe Marciano's was a little harder. Hard to tell. down between his eyes, the blood. Marciano got in a good straight left jab. He hadn't landed many of those. Grazed the face with the right hand then, Marciano. It's a tough fight. And the bell for the end of round seven. Watching Marciano in his corner, as you were, you could see that they're still working uh, Charlie Goodman in that cut uh, on the top of his head up there. It's uh, where he possibly butted Walcott. You couldn't say for sure, but it's there and uh, high up on top of the head. Walcott's eye they're still very busy with, but that's not a deep cut. Didn't bother him too much in the last round. From now on, uh, you might figure years to count that uh, the edge would be with Marciano, the younger man, but Walcott looks very fresh, very good shape. Round eight. Marciano got a solid right in under the heart there. Walcott is doing a little of the Walcott waltz now for the first time, retreating. Moving sideways a bit. The boy has been going straight back. Well, but acts as if that eye might be bothering him. He uh, doesn't seem to be seeing too clearly. I can't be sure, but looks that way. Backing out a light left, just a light left jab. Begins to look a little tired, Walcott. Uh, not too bad, but this fight's only about half over. Marciano chart with a left jab.
it doesn't seem to be eyes are squinted. I don't know whether he's maybe he's not seeing too well either. End of round eight. They're trying to get that, whatever it is, chemical or something that they put on the cut, I assume, out of uh, Marciano's eye. Uh, he was squinting badly at the end of that round, and he still is in his corner. Now, uh, Wal is again talking to the uh, referee and holding out his hands. Uh, it's, now he walks over and uh, pointing to... The eyes, his own eyes, apparently is saying that uh, something is being done, that something has got in uh, Marciano's eyes, and here they go again. Now, while says to the referee, do you see that stuff on his eye, meaning on Walker's eye? good for the champion to his advantage. Marciano, very powerful with that left to the body and back to the head with it. Rocky's eyes are open again in this round. Trading punches, bang, bang, bang. Neither seems to have a knockdown punch now, however, but those are hard blows. is landed. And they fight past the bell, ending round nine. One thing that definitely happened in that ninth round was that uh, Marciano, who had squinted badly through the eighth round, Looked as if something was happening to his eyes. Got his eyes wide open again. They're bright and clear and seem to be all right. Now, Wilder was complaining that something that had been put on the cut over Walcott's eye had rubbed off and uh, made uh, it so that Rocky couldn't see very well. But whatever it was seems to have been taken care of now. And uh, as we come up to round 10, it's a close, tough, hard fight with only, as you saw, one knockdown, round 10.
Hardly stalking, stalking, never stop stalking him. Made him laugh, then. When fighters laugh, that was Walker who laughed, they're sometimes hurt a little. Walcott's a little more of a target now, a little easier to hit than he's been, but left jab is landing for Rocky. Joe is more flat-footed than he was earlier. Marciano hit him with a good right hand and brought that silly grin to... Walcott's face, and now Joe was holding on there for a moment. Marciano is mean to the body. Joe's taking it, so is rocking. Bang, bip, bang again. He's a wonder, this old walker, making Marciano miss there. Now Rocky walks away for a change. Now, Marciano lands a solid right as the tenth round ends. Okay, now we're coming down to the decisive rounds of this fight, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 for the heavyweight championship of the world here in Philadelphia. It started with a bang and a rush with old Joe Walcott, the champion, knocking young Rocky Marciano, 10 years his junior, down with a left hook, first time that Marciano ever had been put on the canvas, took a five and came up, and from that time on, they have fought steadily and hard, not thrillingly, not dramatically. Now round 11. Titles in the balance here now. Faces beginning to pop. Those right hand. So tired. Tired but game. Rocky still after him, unrelenting, fighting after him. Awkward, awkward, but he's getting in there, getting that left hand home. Tying him up. Pace is very slow. Lefts and rights, Bob Walker's head side to side. Not potent punches, though.
Marciano was missing when he was swinging with everything he had. Now Walcott has got Marciano in trouble. Marciano's rocking. With the left hook again, right under the body. Marciano's eyes badly cut under the eye. Badly cut under the eye, Marciano. Walker trying to finish him. He's got him pretty near helpless. Rocky hanging on. Walcott's fight now, if he can finish him. Old Joe's calling on everything he's got, everything. Another hard left hand. Now Rocky punches back. And the bell. A welcome bell for Rocky Marciano. That one ending the 11th round. Sure, in that round with that powerful left hook again, drove the right to the body. Marciano sagged and fell into the left hand, and it hurt, it hurt. And for the rest of the round, Marciano did very little. He punched just a little bit at the bell. That was all. Another big round for Walcott. Not quite as big as the first round when he scored the knockdown, but the old champion is showing what has made him champion of the world and why he stays that way while all the people wonder how he can with all his years. Here we go, round 12. no stationary target here such as he found against Joe Lewis at the end of Joe's career when he knocked the old brown bomber out. Beautiful left hand by Walker. Straight left jab. Walcott seems able to take anything Marciana can throw, however. At least he has done it very well so far. He's been hurt, but not badly. again a bit from that cut opened up a little big mouse under Marciano's eye it's a better fight Rocky rushing in still gamely trying Danny Walcott staying out of range, leaping back, moving, moving all the time, Walcott. Now Walcott heavy to the body with the left hand. The 
You'd think that wall could get tired sometime, but he never does. And round 12 ends in much the same pattern as most of the previous rounds. And now if the old fellow's going to get tired, we're coming to the time. Unlucky number coming up as you watch him still giving Marciano advice, still hopeful that he can catch up with the old champion and bring him down. And very confidently in his corner, Felix Bocchicchio, manager of Walcott, stands very cool, very calm, looks down and talks to friends in the press rows. <clears throat> Incidentally, their uh, correspondence here tonight from 10 foreign countries, one from as far away as Bombay and India. That's a long way to come to any prize fight. And now we go round 13, the unlucky number. Maybe. It plainly is intent on staying away now if he can. There's a right hand, walk it. <laughs> and Rocky Marciano is the heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky Marciano. And the story. new heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky Marciano. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Rocky Marciano, Rocky Marciano, the new heavyweight champion of the world. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky. Did you think you were winning? Well, no, I thought I was just maybe a hair behind. I knew I had to do something. Uh, I knew I had to do something. And you did do something. Did you think you were going to catch up with well, him? Well, I, I was wishing I'd hit him with that left hook or right hand. Yeah. He certainly takes a good punch there, Bill. Yeah. And you did hit him with the right hand, of course. Yes, I hit him with right hands and left hooks. Did, did you think he was gone? Did you think he was gone when you nailed him? Well, I knew it hurt him. You could feel the punch. You yeah. knew it hurt him. I knew it hurt well, congratulations, Rocky. You're a great fighter, game boy, and a, a great credit. Historian Angelo Prospero. So that one right hand that night in Philadelphia created the mystique of uh, Rocky Marciano and made him as a great champion. The shoe town had a new identity, and Brockton proudly celebrated its native son. Thousands of the city's working class citizens had gambled it all on Marciano. Homes, cars, and bank accounts. This was their thank you. Pat Petronelli remembers the day. Here's a fellow that I've gone to movies with, and all of a sudden, he's a giant. It didn't look real, and it didn't feel real. Here's my guy that I've known for years, my buddy, and here I'm screaming like everybody else. I said, what are they hollering at? All of a sudden, Rocky's little car come by us, and I jumped in and hollered as loud as everybody else. Hi, champ. Good luck, champ. Peter Marciano was in a parade car behind his brother. I honestly believe he would have been much more comfortable maybe walking down the street or maybe being one of the crowd waving to that famous person driving down the street in the open vehicle. Even as champion, it was said he had the grin of a shy fellow happy to be recognized. So I, I want to go down and wreck it as saying that you were the hottest puncher I ever fought. And the night that I fought you, I believe you were the greatest. Your punches were strong and powerful. You were moving around so good.